I had one, but it's probably not one you can answer, Shell. What's that? This is Lear. Well, I always struggle with floating text, and I know some students need it. Mm -hmm. And then as they develop some experience, um, I was wondering, have you thought of a way that we can make floating text disappear when we don't need it? Sure. It can be done in script very easily. It's not a problem. That's what I thought. And now I do want to say one thing about the voice simulation here. Uh, it's helpful if you have a group of students uh, so that everybody can overhear what the one is having conversation with. But it's also very helpful for people who are visually impaired that may have some difficulty interacting with the menu. Uh, so uh, almost every project we do and that I personally do, I keep accessibility in mind because I think this is something that is missing from our virtual world. Shailen, this is delightful. I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm using the Firestorm viewer and you're using SceneGate. Correct. What is the advantage that you see with your SceneGate viewer specifically related to these bots? Okay. Uh, well, there's a couple of things. Uh, one is that the, first off, the digital teaching assistants are teaching you how to use SceneGate. And so uh, for the user who's using Firestorm, the instructions might not make a lot of sense to them. The other thing is that SceneGate has the same uh, Chewy interface that Second Life does. So the user interface is actually similar to people uh, who are familiar with using the Second Life viewer. Now, um, there is a function in SceneGate on preferences on the sound panel that you can set it for low, medium, or high quality sounds. Uh, so if you set it at high quality, you actually get a very high quality sound um, reproduction that happens. And I've tested this against Firestorm and SceneGate is definitely superior. We inherited that feature from Alchemy, which is our code base that we forked to begin the work on SceneGate. Uh, now, there are other things in SceneGate that are a specific advantage. One of them is simplified mode. We added two modes to the viewer, and the user can select the mode in preferences. The default mode will be simplified mode, and what that ha is is a very, very limited amount of information on the menus. You cannot build things, uh, and this allows the user to not get cognitive overload when they first get started. When they're ready to graduate uh, to more advanced and learn to build, they choose extended mode and restart the viewer, and then a lot more uh, features will show up that they will have access to. So our goal there is to reduce onboarding time uh, for new students. Great, thank you. It sounds kind of like, almost like um, contingent release in a learning management system. Yes. Uh, quite a few years ago, Linden Labs removed the feature to hear voice equally from everyone. This digitally marginalized people like myself who are hearing impaired uh, and also people who are cognitive impaired or mobility impaired that don't have the uh, ability to quickly zoom in on different people to make sure they can hear them at an acceptable volume. So we have added a patch to SceneGate to put it back in. Uh, the other OpenSum viewer devs did not feel like that was a feature they wanted on the roadmap. This was one of the drivers for us forking uh, the code base and having our own viewer. The other thing that we're doing is the Starlight CUI scan uh, as a default. It still has some work to be done. For people who use Firestorm, you can see that scan uh, as well. It is the most accessible scan for people with visual uh, difficulties. So that's kind of in a nutshell, we focused on usability, we focused on performance improvements, and we focused on accessibility features. Uh, we also had to fix the uh, problem caused by the Windows 10 1903 update that was causing the graphics driver to not release properly when uh, a user closed the viewer. We fixed that. So the, the test version, Barbara, that you have access to is the one that I'm using right now. And I've been using it for months. 
I, I think most people who have tested it, it's been very positive. I know Rosa has tested, Selby has tested, uh, and we're always looking for good feedback. Like Selby said, the defaults that we're choosing, we all, uh, among the closed beta testers, we voted on what we believe the default preferences should be. Uh, we discussed them from the perspective of a new user uh, and from the perspective of people with accessibility issues. So it is a collective effort. It's not just one dev making decisions. We listen to our community.